but it should be interesting here at MetLife Stadium, just outside of New York City. This is the scene just before we came on air. This New York crowd fired up by the arrival of their G-men as they burst from the locker room. They're ready to go as the Giants get set to match up with Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. Welcome again, one and all. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Brandon Gordon on hand alongside Charles Davis. And yes, the storyline here, the weather. Snow and more of it expected as this game continues. So how will that impact how this one goes? Can these teams ignore the distraction and the strangeness of playing in a snow game? Because it actually affects the crowd as well. That big roar you get is often muffled when there's a snow game. And the second part, what's the footwear you got on? Does that fit the turf you're playing on? And how will it handle as things get a little bit slick? Eli Manning looking set to bring out this New York Giants offense and the talk last year for him in a giant season that didn't go the way they had hoped was that he saw his streak of 210 consecutive starts snapped in week 13. He wants to continue playing. Now the question, will he be back in New York? Now that they are under new management, new general manager will be hiring a brand new head coach. I think the odds are that Eli Manning will have a great chance of being back as a New York Giant. I know things really got sideways during the 2017 season. But remember, he missed the one start, came back, reclaimed his job, and finished the season as the starting quarterback for the New York Giants. If they believe he gives them the best chance to win, he will be the quarterback in 2018, and that's what I expect to happen. And they're able to get this one across the 35. So here we go, first and ten now. Shotgun now for Manning. And it's incomplete. It's a dangerous pass. That's what it was. And it brings up second down. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line. Hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. They fake the handoff. Now Manning. They'll let it go deep for Beckham. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. And a peek at the defense for the Packers. Some people think it's trite to say, but it's hard to be great in the NFL. But Nick Perry, he's starting to round into form. Had 12 and a half sacks in his first four years in the league. Had 11 in 2016. Has become a force off the edge for Green Bay. It looks like the Packers have added an extra DB on third down. Now Manning again. And the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. Kenny Clark able to get him down for a loss of 11 on the play. And it'll be fourth down. Well, we knew this guy wasn't especially fleet of foot, but he tried to conjure up some escapability, but there was no way he was getting away on that one.
Here's Brad Wing now to punt it away on fourth down. Trevor Davis deep for Green Bay. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Green Bay quarterback Aaron Rodgers bringing out the offense here. And the Packers' whole season in 2017 obviously went south against the Vikings. Week six, that was the collarbone injury to Aaron Rodgers. He came back against the Panthers, thought they might recover, couldn't get into the playoffs. It was a strange season in Green Bay, wasn't it? It certainly was, and now there have been a lot of changes since the season ended in Green Bay because there will be a new offensive coordinator. There will be a new defensive coordinator. Obviously, there are going to be some new players that are coming in. But as long as Aaron Rodgers is piloting this team, they will remain a contender if he's healthy. They'll run with a backup. This is Williams. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. closes quickly. He'll only get up to the 22-yard line. Only a yard on the pickup, and now they've got a third down and eight. And this defensive line will be looking to control the point of attack. And that's what they've done throughout this season. This is a terrific unit. They play together very, very well, and they don't permit big plays to happen. Third and eight defensively, they're going to beef up the secondary. Six defensive backs. Shotgun now for Rodgers. Got a man. It's his tight end, Lance Kendricks. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. Nine yards on the pickup there, and it keeps the drive alive. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. To throw is Rodgers. He completes it to Jordy Nelson. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Okay, so now the question, how did he get that wide open? Well, we both know that he shouldn't because from the time they handed out scouting reports before this game, he was circled, starred, everything. Find him, cover him. But sometimes you can scheme a guy open. You put the receivers in a bunch. Maybe you move some motion. Maybe you put them on the back side of a formation, and all of a sudden you've got a better matchup. Every now and then, the offensive guys, they figure a way to get him open, even with everyone keeping eyes on him. And that's certainly a guy they want to keep trying to scheme open. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here. That looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass incomplete. Rodgers again now. This is Cobb with a catch right side. Rodgers to Cobb. Good for a Green Bay first. Never make the mistake that this line receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Here's Rodgers. 
Over the middle, Rodgers has it. A gain of six there on first. Well, from their point of view, this game could not be starting out much better, could it? Force a punt on defense, and now they're moving it crisply on offense. Crisply, I like that. Like yeah, that? yeah, moving it very, very well. Looks like the defense on there. Heels a little bit. You put a score in here, long way to go, but you're right. That's a heck of a start. Yeah, and I think this is where a play caller is looking at his play sheet and saying, to have that dagger play, to have that play to just finish him off right now, because I think they'd love to gain that big advantage early. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for the tight end, Lance Kendricks, there. And it's third and four. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch, but underthrown balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. And again, it's Rodgers. He sets up the screen to Jones, and he'll get it down here to the 43. Only two on the screen pass there, and it'll be fourth down. In order for a screen pass to break big, a lot of things have to come together and be well executed. But all it takes is one small thing to go wrong and keep it from being a big game. Too long for a field goal, too short to punt that in-between range, and they'll go for it on fourth down. They'll go for it. It's Rodgers. It's caught. Nelson. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Give him eight on the play, and on fourth down, they're able to convert and move the sticks. I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Not only that, but that big article in this paper this morning about their philosophy on starting games like you're shot out of a cannon, and that's what they've done. Very methodical here on this first drive. Yeah, so many teams talk about that fast start. We're actually seeing it happen right here in front of us. But now the kicker, can they cap it off by putting the ball in the end zone? One quarter down here on a frigid December night. Nothing, nothing, our score. Back to MetLife Stadium in just a moment. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Packers in possession of the football. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. And this seemingly endless drive continues. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And he'll be taken down at the 34. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally, because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. On second down, here's Rodgers. And Nelson's got it here right side. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. The old connection, Rodgers to Nelson, getting Green Bay a first down. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him even if he has an elite defender on him because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Throwing on first down is Rodgers. And nearly picked off there. Almost intercepted. Instead, second down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Oh, 
improved. Long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. On second down, Montgomery. And not much to speak of there. Maybe a yard down to the 20. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? The Packers on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and nine. From the gun, it's Rodgers. Drops it to Jones in the plant. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. It'll be a gain of six, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they've rallied and made the tackle. So now on fourth down, Rodgers will give way to Mason Crosby for the field goal try. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goalposts. And the Packers are off to a 3-0 lead. I feel like we just ran a marathon. That was a long drive. They probably wanted six if they're going to go that many plays. And there were no checkpoints, no watering stations, nothing like that, right? Terrific job by the offense because not only did they possess the ball for that long, they wore down the defense. That could pay dividends later. After the made field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. For the New York Giants, as their offense comes back out there, yet yeah, last year, 3-13, and 13, and that was off from just a year being a playoff team at 11 and 5 they were 31st in total points 31st in overall defense so a lot of changes need to take place they certainly do and frankly the 11 and 5 season masked the changes that are coming now because their numbers weren't that great in the 11 and 5 season somehow they found a way to win those key important games and accumulate a nice record but you look at the underpinnings and you'll see the cracks are already there and they really got exposed in 2017. They'll hit the restart button and do and have a do-over. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Manning to throw on second down. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. That catch good for five. It's third down. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We're back to East Rutherford, but first this time out. A reminder coming up at halftime while the two of us head for warmer areas of the press box. Yes. We'll be sending you to Orlando where Larry Ridley will have highlights and analysis of this first half. Send me to Orlando, please. Don't, don't be so soft. Third down now following the completed pass. From the gun, it's Manning. It's caught, Shepard. Well, they convert on third with a gain of 22. First down now, but the clock continues to move. On first down, Manning. Throwing the out route incomplete, it's Shepard. Yeah, he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. 10 yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Manning to throw once more. A dump off to Vereen. 
And he's going to get this inside the 30. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it now. The confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do say, guess what? We can throw it. We can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. Manning now on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Manning again here on second and ten. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. And before they can run this third down play, we're going to get a timeout. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaunt alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. Again, it's Manning. A screen here to Vereen. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. Fresh set of downs here. Again, they'll throw with Manning. And that is caught. He's got it for a giant touchdown. Brandon Marshall, a 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Giants are in for six. And while that touchdown not give them an insurmountable lead it's still a lead and that always feels good to a team they'd love to take that into the lockers but a little time left on that clock so some work to do i like that i like how you're guarding against a letdown there. are you looking forward coaching them up from right up here in the booth and this is up and good to make it seven three So a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays. And it was finished off by a touchdown by the New York Giants. Rosas now to kick this one away. This will be fielded at the 8. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. 
For the Green Bay Packers, they're coming off a 7-9 season as their offense makes their way back onto the field. But with that 7-9 season, Charles, saw their string of eight straight playoff appearances come to an end. It was just weird not to have Green Bay in the playoffs, right? Yeah, you kept searching for them, didn't you? You kept looking down the list. When does Green Bay play in the playoffs? <laughs> because you're so used to it. But with the injury to Aaron Rodgers that knocked him out for so long, the offense really struggled. Finished 26th in the league in total offense. In a lot of ways, remarkable they finished 7 and 9. Yeah, and Brett Hundley came in trying to do his thing. I don't think it was much of an indictment on the play of Hundley as it made me appreciate Aaron Rodgers more. I think we all did, and I do believe that the head coach, Mike McCarthy, was trying to fashion offense and also take care of Brett Hundley in the beginning, and that made things easier for some defenses. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Rodgers handing to Montgomery. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He lost two there. And it's third down. Jason Pierre-Paul first burst on the scene for me. Headed towards his draft year. You know what I saw him doing? Like 15, 16 backflips in a row on a YouTube video. Athlete. Absolute athlete. And he uses that agility to slip past guys and make plays in the backfield. That draft year 2010, 15th overall pick. So we've reached intermission here in a low-scoring game. 7-3 is our score. As we send you now to Orlando and our Tiburon Studios, where Larry Ridley is standing by with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. Let's take a look back at the first half. Both the Giants and the Packers haven't had a reliable run game so far. The push-up front has not been there, and you have to give credit to both defenses on that front. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Packers with the ball midway through one. Combs able to get free along the sideline. And he ends up at their own 49-yard line. Packers are set up with three points on the drive. First and ten. Marshall's going to haul in the pass, and he kept off the nine play drive with the TD. Giants go up by four. That'll do it from here in Orlando. Let's get back up to New York as we turn it back over to Brandon Guy. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This will be fielded at the eight. They had a good effort on the return there. Gets them across the 30 to the 33-yard line. The Packers offense now heading back out onto the field. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors. But overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up. And we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. Third quarter starting with a run from Montgomery. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. So statistically, both of these offenses have a rough time getting a running game going. But boy, what a nice play there defensively. Tackling him behind the line, but you're right. You look at the numbers. Neither side looks on track in the ground game.
Offense needs something here on second down. It is second and long. Working from the gun, Rodgers. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? On third and long, it's Rodgers. A dump underneath to Jones. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. They'll give him eight on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. On now is the Packers punter as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense, we got, the yeah. we, got the we, got the we got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and... Packer pressure and down he goes. Now that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. time the run maybe gets him back to the line of scrimmage but that's it no gain on the play this time and it'll be a third and long situation coming up and he got off the end there very quickly to make that play yeah it was almost like the bullet train wasn't it i mean just zoom quick 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 and what a terrific play holding them to no gain now flags will come in i think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping Neutral zone infraction defense. Jumpy on the right side of the line. Sometimes when you're on the end, a little bit farther away from the ball, any type of movement will get you to jump, and that's exactly what happened there. The Giants on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is going to be third and 13. Working from the gun. Manning. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. Here's Brad Wing now, standing just outside his own goal line. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. 
So possession goes over here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. now on first down he couldn't quite hold it got hit ball pops out incomplete hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one but that's the exact right throw either your receiver gets it or no one gets it give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it got rid of it no one got it 10 yards still left on second down Now Rodgers to throw again. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. The Packers on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and ten. Shotgun now for Rodgers. In the middle of the field, he's got Nelson. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. A gain of 26 on the third down conversion. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Now a play fake here on first down. Complete left side, the tight end Rodgers. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. Final minute now of the third quarter. First down, here's the run to Montgomery. And he's got four down inside the 20 to the 18. I think many people thought Ty Montgomery would automatically go back to being a wide receiver this year. But it appears he's going to stay at running back. I know they drafted Jamal Williams from BYU, but Montgomery proving his worth. And he proved it, yeah, proved it last year. 5.4 yards per carry, fourth best in the league. Now Rodgers throwing on second down. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to him because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. The Packers on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This will be third and six. Here's Rodgers to throw. This is Cobb with a catch right side. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. 
In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they can do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back now here in East Rutherford. It's the Packers who have the football but in need of points as we begin quarter number four. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Now it's Rodgers. And he floated one out there incomplete. I know you felt like saying touchdown there, didn't you, partner? That looked like a sure six points, but the contact jarred it free. Got his hands on it, could not hold on through the end of the play. Second down following the incompletion. Rodgers hands to Montgomery. Shrugs him off. And he tried to bounce it outside, but they'll stop him behind the line. It's a loss of two, now third down. And yet again, this run game just continues to be completely shut off. Completely stymied. I mean, they're trying to get some consistency, trying to find places to roam. They just haven't been there throughout this game. The Packers on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third down and 12. Now Rodgers. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And flags come in as he gets forward for about three yards. And let's check on the call. So they decline it as that will bring up four. And I know that yardage and field position are keys to any game played, but you got to consider downs when you're talking about penalties. And they wisely did not take that one and made it fourth down. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And Crosby puts it through, and they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. to six. All right, so this one's now back within a field goal, and if anybody tells you they see how this one's going to end, I'd have to say they're probably lying, Charles. And this game's had more twists and turns than a good mystery novel, and I have a feeling we've got a few more twists and turns in store for us before they shake hands here. After the main field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. This one taken from the seven. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. And the Giants ready to come out now. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense. Get a couple of first downs. 
and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. They go play action here on first down. Now the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. Nick Perry, the outside linebacker, drops him for a loss of six. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here, and what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Now Manning. And he's got Rome. A good pick up there of 20 yards. And the defense in desperate need of a stop. They have to get off the field and get the ball back to their offense if they want a chance. Throwing on first down is Manning. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Evan Ingram was the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Manning will try again on second down. Open man right side is Ingram. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. And he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, I, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. So it's Giants football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ball game.
And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. to the action. A timeout here defensively. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. So two plays with only negative yardage to show, and now it's third and 16. Now a first carry here for Shane Vereen. And that play will go nowhere, losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Here's Brad Wing now, as he's on to punt for New York. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And out of bounds, sailed over, looked like right near the pylon. This one's going to be perfect. Directional kicking at its finest right down at the one-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. Back to throw. He's going to dump that off to his running back, Montgomery. Call it a gain of three, and it's a second down. The clock still runs. We're at 90 seconds now. Back to throw. Over the middle, that's caught by Adams. And this one will be taken up. They'll spot it right at the seven. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. He's back to throw. He'll leave it for Montgomery complete. And he's going to have the first down as he's marked down just shy of the 20. 12 yards there as they move the chains. He'll look to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. throw 
Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Trying to go for the big one there on second down. Now they're likely down to their final two plays. And you know they've got to keep going for the big shot, right? So defensively, you play what they call top down. Nothing behind you. Make everything get completed in front. The Packers on third down. Five out of nine thus far. This is third and ten. Rodgers to throw. Drops it to Jones in the flat. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. It's a gain of nine yards. And that'll bring up fourth down. Now Rodgers got to have this one. Open man, the tight end, Rodgers. And he brings this up to the 46, good enough for the first. 19 yards there on the pickup. And they're able to pick up the conversion here on fourth down. This one down all the way near the 30. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Ben and God. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Giants are winners as we say so long.